What's up, everybody? Thank you for listening to the Moist Boys Podcast. This is Josh. Much like your prom dates, time of the month, you don't like us to be late. We don't like to be late, but things happen. Life happens. Uh, we got some more content for you, uh, more cough syrup content. Uh, we're getting uh, we're getting rowdy on this one, so uh, just sit back, relax, uh, let it wash over you, I guess. I don't know. It uh, It's an experience that we're all going to have together. Please stay tuned for more new content. We're going to be looking back at the year that was 2019, as well as the decade that was the 2010s. We've got a lot of fun stuff planned for the upcoming year, so please stick around. If you'd like to, please hop on over to uh, patreon.com slash moistboyspodcast. You can support us over there. We're going to hopefully do uh, more exclusive content in this coming year. And we can do that with your help. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being patient. And without further ado, here comes that content straight to your ears. You're listening to the Moist Boys Podcast. Jonathan has a topic that he wanted to do us to. <laughs> Phrasing. Um, do it to the do topic. Do of. Phrasing is key. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Diction is done with the di- tip of the tongue and the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> <Hello. laughs> um, okay, so bringing it back. Oh my God. Uh, so the topic that I want to talk about uh, is I want to get your guys' opinion on whether or not Addiction uh, is done with the tip of the tongue and the teeth. Because I've heard it is. <laughs> if you're getting teeth and then you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Nine, yeah, out, no nine out of ten scientists say. No teeth. Just a little, just a little bit of teeth right on the I mean, a little, a little bit of teeth uh, is fine. <laughs> a little bit of teeth is fine. <laughs> oh, anywho. God. <laughs> just to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, uh, One's more from the top. Uh, is, Jesus. Is, is cough syrup contagious? <laughs> <laughs> it might be. No, but beer you are drinking is beer is contagious <laughs> it's sweeping the nation i've got beer i i've got beer doc how long do i got you don't got it all johnny to be fair it's a cooler so i don't know if that counts yeah it's basically just water yeah oh my god I'd fucking hydrate before you die there you go yeah <laughs> okay so um the topic that i wanted to, to uh, get your guys opinion on is no. uh no uh <laughs> comedy that is supposed to exist outside of time and if it should be vague or if it's okay that it gets into specifics uh and the example that i will use uh is an episode of the simpsons that came out during the bush administration uh where weed becomes legal junior or senior uh junior Mm. um so yeah sorry w bush thank you uh w w weed weed becomes legal in springfield And so, like, Homer uh, has a joint, and he's, like, token up on the joint, and he basically, he verbatim says that I could go up to the president and blow smoke in his stupid monkey face, and there's nothing he could do about it. Yeah. Fine. Everybody made the the chimpanzee comparisons to W. Mm -hmm. That's, okay, yeah. Low-hanging fruit, but fine. Yeah. Fast forward, like, five years... Not an okay joke. No. Can you can you explain that a little bit no. more? No. Harley, don't. <laughs> you take now, your cough syrup elsewhere. Sir. Now, no, it's it's not an okay joke for most people. For yeah. your shitty people, your Scott Bayos, that's a perfectly fine joke. Yeah, no, fine. it's not a perfectly fine joke. It's still Scott Bayo would disagree. <laughs> it's a shitty ass joke you shouldn't fucking make. All I'll say is that Charles definitely should not be in charge. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you, Johnny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, so yeah, that's like that's just something that. So you're w- looking to see if jokes that like date you. Yeah. But like, yeah, like I mean, there that, are jo- just, there are jokes that date you, but yeah. there are jokes that like are you timeless? had no foresight whatsoever, no. and you decided to make this joke. I mean, but you could say that about anything, really. I mean, again, like I'm going to preface this by saying, like, 
obviously with the implications of that joke and how it could be taken if you did not realize who George W. Bush was at the time. Yes, that's problematic as fuck. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, with how quickly, especially nowadays, with how quickly language changes, how quickly, you know, memes come and go. Oh, every pleasant. time. Every time. We're professionals it's here. It's not night time. Um, <laughs> sure is. Um, I mean, it, it, it's it's almost an. <laughs> That's nice. Um, it's almost impossible to avoid. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. Any, um, anything we say, like but, any turn of phrase. Yeah. So I, any, I feel like this This is like, it, it has not come up where I have needed to make the argument, but anybody who is always like, oh, you know, the Simpsons currently always predicting the future. Yeah. Really? Because <laughs> they fucking missed this one. Not in that case. Yeah. yeah. I mean... You just can't do comedy anymore, I think, is what the main, is my main takeaway well, from this. Here's the thing. Here's the did we thing just is become that... Joe Rogan? <laughs> no. Fucking Adam Kroll over here. Yeah. Um, no, that was that was a joke. It's, yeah. it's, was, the the it thing is, is that, that shows goof. date themselves in other ways, even if their comedy doesn't. And so... Harley's right. Language changes so fast that you make a joke one way and somebody's going to be like, oh my gosh, that's really dated. Nobody yeah. says that anymore. Anybody who used the words lit in a show for a minute there. Yeah. I still say. I'm going to say to this, I, to this day, like unironically, I'm mostly sorry. ironically, but. Y'all's is old. So it's all so right. The fact that we even use it is completely like. It means that it's dead. It's dead. So, yeah. Yeah. By the time it's percolated down to us. It is no longer alive. Yeah. <laughs> that wire is no longer live. No. no. You just so, grab it whenever you want. I mean, <laughs> it's it's hard to say that any comedy is vague enough to be timeless. Yeah. Right. But I mean, like, so I, I feel like this maybe maybe just pertains the most to, like, The Simpsons as a show because well, they go, they go the out of... Well, no, but I mean, like... Because <laughs> we can do that, but let's do it on another yeah. podcast because that's... But, like, a, that's that show event. goes out of its way to exist no when and every when. Yeah. But then to just, like, throw in, like, things like that. Well, I mean, I think you could also kind of track that with how the simpsons as a tv show has changed a lot through the years i mean because there's definitely a period where it, exi it existed in its own kind of narrative storytelling style void if you will like it, i mean it told its own stories it had its own characters it did exactly what it wanted to do on its own schedule i think there definitely was a shift in comedy um especially around like when south park and family guy became relevant which basically was, I think, like the real mainstream, like shift to referential comedy, like memes as we see them today. Anything that references anything else, I think pay. I think has to at least pay a little bit of. Um, I guess it's what's the term I'm looking for. Family Guy and South Park basically set the stage for that form of comedy, or maybe reacted to. I don't know, but I think that The Simpsons has definitely pivoted to where it became more and more like those shows and that it definitely injected more and more topical humor. Yeah. So it, it's a, it's an interesting <clears throat> parallel, though, because, again, the show does do a lot to keep itself kind of separate from our world, but then also, especially, like, I think in the last 10 years, it's done a lot to... Again, like, it predicts all sorts of things. Yeah. I, I, I mean, if you read into it that way, but... Uh, I think, yeah, so having this, having, seeing something like current on the Simpsons is always sad because it's like, oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Um, like, so to preface this, I have not watched the show regularly, like new episodes for like 15 years now. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while since I've seen regularly new episodes, but, um, from what I've, I've gleaned from the internet, like Bart has an iPhone now, and Bart yeah. and Homer started a podcast, and then like all these. It's like, oh, but that's like you want, like it started off as one thing, and obviously, when things go for thirty years, they have to change. But maybe that's a good, a good rule of thumb that maybe shows shouldn't be on for thirty years. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean when it's you... it's just not what it was before, which which I think can be fine. I mean, if if this new generation likes it and appreciates it and is able to connect and relate. I mean, I think it's still the, doing The issue is, like, 
<clears throat> as far as I can tell, nobody does. Yeah. I think the only reason why it's still on is because it's cheaper to produce it than not produce it at this point. Uh, yeah. Because, like... The merchandise just kind of sells Merchandise, itself. the... All the... Like, every piece of animation you could ever want has already been done. So you can just type in a couple of keystrokes and you have a, a whole new episode. Right. So that just means you have to ha- pay the writers. But I guess most of the episodes now are just sequels to old golden era yeah simpsons so like camp crusty 2 was a recent episode they did really yeah oh, so like shit. they're just going back let's like well we're doing it again just play the hits yeah sideshow bob fucking circa yeah because they even they have even gone back now so they have gone gotten to the point where they decided to do a flashback episode but because of the time period we are in now the flashback of Homer and Marge being younger took place in the 90s. Oh, no. So, like, Homer was, like, into gr- grunge, and it's like, no. That's they, not... No. Yeah. That's not the thing. Like, they were teenagers at the end of the 70s. Like, yeah. just, that's, a, that's, leave it, don't. I mean, I think that's just a, one of the pit, pitfalls of having a story that takes place in you know the real world i guess um like like something like pokemon for example of course i'm gonna always fucking bring it back to pokemon <laughs> ash ketchum's been what like he's been 10 years he's old been 10 years old 20 last, years uh, yeah like the last 20 25 years so for him obviously living in a fantasy land of you know whatever region he's you know residing in at the time you Kento, know bento shinto shinto pinto yeah who knows? <laughs> God damn it. racism this is the one constant <laughs> yeah yeah um but i mean again he ha- there's nothing that necessarily dates his journey that ties him to the real world sometimes they have little pocket pokedexes sometimes they have literally a pokemon that is now pokedex i don't know um but then you compare that to The Simpsons, and, I mean, for a show that's gone on for as long as it has, you can't really avoid... If you're going to bring that narrative into the real world, you can't really avoid those kinds of issues. I don't know. Yeah. What was the prompt again? Timeless comedy. Timeless comedy. Yeah. So is there So is there yeah. a sh- another, <laughs> another instance where maybe something... A show, a movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there's like plenty of times where a movie like made a joke and then you were just like, ooh. Well, I was actually going to say that <laughs> this is funny because I definitely just watched this like maybe a month or two ago and it was something that I had rewatched recently um, is Blazing Saddles. That, has anyone seen that? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. A long time Gene, ago. Gene, yeah. Gene Wilder. Like, it, I, I think if you were to read about it at all, like recently, like it's still heralded as like an amazing film as really like one of the proprietors of like, again, another modern day comedy. But if you go back and watch it, if you're not aware of the kind of satire and the kind of like inclusiveness that and it was, what it was doing when yeah, it did it. it, it is an extremely problematic film. Like, cause literally every five minutes of that movie, you get an N word dropped. Yeah. And from a white person, from, from a white person. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, again, it's typically accompanied with, you know, the one main black character looking at the screen and winking and being like, okay, fuck all these people. Like, I'm the smartest one, you know, on screen right now, which, I mean, again, I think it, it pushes, like, a lot of, uh, again, for the time, very progressive ideas. Um, but watching that movie with Kari, my wife, <laughs> and uh, a bunch of my, my parents and our grandparents, like, we just, <laughs> we just grabbed it for, like, an after movie or an after dinner movie. Like, we were all just sitting there being like, oh, my God god what is this and uh i mean i think that definitely is a case where again like language has changed so much and our understanding of language and our understanding of obviously in relation comedy has changed so much in the last 50 60 years that yeah the the thing with blazing saddles though is that i feel like while it is not a movie that exists out of time. What it is doing will always kind of be timeless. Yeah. Because it knows exactly what it's doing. Exactly. And I feel like that's that's like an entirely different beast. I mean, in, 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 a, in a sense. But I yeah. mean, d- for, some, for a show like Blazing Saddles to exist and to be valued for what it is now, 
there's a lot of unpacking you have yeah, to do. And there's a sure. lot of baggage that comes with it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that it's heralded as a, as a timeless comedy, and I think that as long as you go into it with the understanding of what it was trying to do, it can be. But, I mean, I think that that I mean, I mean, think that's like an extreme um, case of that sort of situation, just where we have like these completely off-limits terms and words, which, you know, they should be. But, yeah. You know. Definitely. Well, I feel like the 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 modern version of Blazing Saddles uh, is probably Django Unchained. Yeah, any really any Quentin Tarantino film, for the most part. For the most part, yeah. Heather, you had a subject that you wanted to uh, yeah. tell you. So we've ended racism with Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> We have ended racism. No more. Yeah. So what? What are we going to end now on your side? You said you had a subject yeah, but you now to it's definitely weird to talk about because <laughs> y'all is just hi. I'm just trying to end racism over here. <laughs> that is cool. Weird. I know. No, no, it's not weird. It's just like you guys got real deep, and now I'm gonna be like. Well, that's fine. We'll bring us back. Bring us oh. back on a high note. Bring us back. Yeah, get, yeah. Take us out on a high note. Yeah. Don't, oh, let, a high don't note. let it I was end gonna. On. Oh no, I was gonna go negative. Oh, let's do it. Oh, okay. then yeah, let's yeah, do, do it. it. Let's do burn it. it down. I was do gonna it. say. Okay, so my my topic, which I wanted to bring up a couple months ago, but it was no, it's better now. Um, <laughs> is what adaptations of material? What you know, adaptations of a comic book or a or a book. That do you love and which ones do you hate? Oh. We're going to let you go first on this one. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool the cool, cool, Hobbit cool. by Peter Jackson. Love it. <laughs> Get <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> that checks out. You mean the cartoon Hobbit, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, no. Actually, animated token is yeah. totally disturbing and a mind trip and is amazing, but. Um, so I have two that I dislike, and one actually really fits in with um, a topic we're talking about on our other podcast. His his dork materials is <gasps> I. I was there for that one. Um, <laughs> I love his dark materials as a trilogy, as a, as a set of books, and and oh. so if you want to hear all of my opinions, go to his dork materials because I'm gonna have lots. Mm-hmm. Um. You you've read them right? I've read them all I've read several them as well. times. I love yeah. them. I don't love Golden Compass. So I I did talk about this on the other one. I don't think it's a bad movie. I don't. Oh. I don't think that a Golden Compass is a bad movie. I yeah. think it's a terrible yeah. adaptation. Oh no, it's so bad. So <laughs> it's so I, bad for so many reasons. Yeah. So it's very much. I I like it as a as a film. Yeah. It's fine. As an adaptation of what that book is, it's bad. It's so bad. It's awful. Um, however, I have I have one that's worse. Um Aragon is the worst oh, no. adaptation yeah. of a book to film that I have ever. Yeah. Ever ever seen which is bad because i love jeremy i yeah it's it's like the one the one thing that can save any so bad it's good film for me is jeremy Jeremy irons Irons, i don't think he did he didn't he didn't save it he i i would say he actually contributed worse yeah Yeah. yeah. (laughs) it was very much like he was like i'm here to get a paycheck i don't fucking Mm. care what am i saying today everything about that was phoned in it was bad um which is sad because that's that's another that's a book series that I loved at the beginning and yeah. I thought got real bad to where I didn't finish reading. At, at <laughs> so you stopped reading in the middle of the third one, didn't I you? Did, yeah. I did, I did, I did. How many are there anyway? There's four. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't read the last book. So it's as a movie as a book. Because there's the blue dragon, red dragon, green dragon, gold dragon? Black. Gold dragon and then or sorry, black dragon and then green no. dragon. Yeah, black dragon. It's a gold dragon on a bl- it's a black cover with a gold dragon there and then it it's green oh, dragon. Okay. I was close. Um but I I couldn't finish the book series. So for it's not the best book series, but however, Aragon as a book on its own, yeah. had you been done, had it been done, which it should have been done. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's it's a it's a teen, you know. Yeah. Novel. It, what, what, what's, what's, it was what's literally the written it's, it's by a YA. It's well, a YA. Yeah, young adult. Written by a YA. By, written really? by a teenager. He was a teenager Wait, when he wrote really? these books. Yeah. Oh, Which is why Aragon is such like a, oh, this is really cool. It was written by a 16 year old. Yeah. And I like this book and it's a great book. Um, he should have stopped writing the, the series. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not stopped writing altogether. Stop writing altogether. But he definitely oh, should have been done writing this series. Yep. Um, I blame Oprah well, on for that one. Yeah. Yeah. It checks out. As uh, with all things. But the, the, 
the movie did it so dirty. What what specifically did you not like about the movie adaptation? I, I get killed I, off Jeremy Irons when he does not. Is no, not he does. He gets killed off. No, okay. he gets killed off. Spoilers. Spoilers. Oh, Spoilers. Fuck you. Johnny. Spoilers for, for the book and the movie. Yeah. Yes. Jeremy Irons' character is supposed to be killed off. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he does get buried the way he's supposed to. However, nothing else is fucking it's so bad. Yeah, it's because somebody does the book saw, actually have a dragon. So, yes, cool. somebody saw Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Got that right. Yeah. yeah, somebody saw Lord of the Rings and went, "That I want to make that yeah. with no budget." <laughs> Let's go. Because <laughs> um, we're going to spend all of our money getting Jeremy Irons, getting Jeremy Irons. to be on this. I mean, if, if you're going to blow John your budget. Malkovich. And John Malkovich. Um, it's just, it's done. <sighs> yeah. So soak it in, buddy. So didn't he just poorly. didn't he didn't he go? F- he either went from that movie to Jonah Hex, or he went from Jonah Hex to that movie. <laughs> one of the one yeah. of those two. Either um, way, Jonah Hex is a great movie. Y'all should watch oh, it. Oh no! You. The so really, what I don't like about it is um, none of the dialogue from the book was put into the movie. Maybe I, the dialogue from the book is just trash. No, 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 no. Literally, none of the. I have read this book several like, times. When you say dialogue, I, do you mean like the actual like narrative com- conversation? The conversation of that's between, what we're having. Ah, none of it got put in. Interesting. Like I, I swear to God, they rewrote it completely. Oof. None of it got put in, and what got put in was, um, written by a seven-year-old. The sixteen-year-old wrote better dialogue than. Than whoever wrote this screen. I mean, can we confirm that it wasn't actually written by a seven-year-old? Because I'm seeing a bit of a... Uh... Mm. Um, the acting was done, te- as mentioned terribly, yeah. by seasoned actors who should have acted who better. Who should have done better. Who, I mean, I feel like the no-name kid who literally I don't think has been in anything else since then. Oh, no. Um, was, did, tried, tried harder. Mm-hmm. Tried harder, tried to be in this movie. And the the special effects were real bad. It was real bad. It's real bad. it's it's, it, it's reminiscent of that uh, that quote from M- Michael Caine when you ask him about um, what he remembers from Jaws four. Uh, I think he famously replied, uh, "The house that it bought me." <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. You know, there's there's all there are a lot of pairings that people want, like uh, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, mm-hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. I feel like. I feel like Jeremy Irons and <laughs> bad fantasy movies. <laughs> no, they are that pairing. Jeremy Irons and John, John Malkovich, Malkovich shouldn't be in the same movie together. It's That's not true. a pairing you want. That's ever. It's like it seems like they both like they're going to bring. But it's like not complimentary. Yeah. Oh my god! Two, was he in two something? Very famous. He's been in a lot of stuff actors. actually. Okay. Really? Like what? Uh, yeah. He was, what is what is the kid? What is the the actor's name? Uh, the actor's name. Let me go back up here. Is Ed Spilliers. Oh. He was Jimmy in Downton Abbey. What? Oh, I love that. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. I should have known that. Does he do a lot of uh, cave diving? What? Does Blear go spelunking? God damn it. <laughs> wow. I almost, I, I'm probably also mispronouncing nice. his last name. But. That was a good one. I'm proud of you. <laughs> you can... Ed Spilierunking. Spil- 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 no, he's so he's a he's also in Outlander. Um, he's, he's a Outlander. good ki- he's a good actor. He's a good he's, he's a, a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh, fuck. Is it me? <laughs> is, is it me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, he so was getting back on that. back on topic. So, if we're Who continuing to talk about bad adaptations, bad adaptations. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Do we have a Do we have a title? I think we have a title of this episode. <laughs> I think this title is going to be episode. Put this in the recycle bin. Straight in the garbage. Straight in the garburator. Right click. Scroll down. Delete. Yep. So uh, yeah, does anybody else have? Who else has adaptions they don't like? Uh, I I okay. So this, again, low hanging fruit, and I can't really speak because I've never read the the comic. But uh, I think we can all agree. Jonah Hex, Dark Phoenix. <laughs> Oh Ooh. yeah, they just can't get that right. They cannot get that right. No. The cartoon got it right. The cartoon oh, was yeah. great. Two movies the, now. The nine, the nineties, the nineties cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Even arguably, uh, Wolverine and the X Men mm-hmm. did a better Phoenix Ooh, saga. It was a yeah. really good Phoenix yeah, saga. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but then I think that I've heard people say that if you read the comic books, the the cartoons also aren't. Well, I mean, the, uh, yeah. the comics, though, I mean, that was such like a master class of storytelling and of like really getting you invested, involved in these characters and just fucking 
pulling the rug out from out from under you. Yeah. Like even in the the retellings, because obviously Jean Grey's died like a million times in the comics. I remember when I hopped on, um, well, what is what one was that? It was whatever the modern retelling after. Um, oh fuck! God damn it! Perfect. Yeah, do, hey, do, here we go. Do, do. Okay, cool. It was uh, like right around the time of like Uncanny X Men. Whatever I mean, that. Uncanny X Men has been a, an ongoing book for yeah. since the eighties, but oh, um, the one the one that Joss Whedon like after that like, didn't, didn't they have like another Dark Phoenix arc? They had I, probably yeah. yeah I, I mean it, they had they're sort, always because one. they had um, where uh, Hope came in. Oh, that's right. And then there was a thing where like Hope was going to get the Phoenix Force, yeah. and that led into AVX. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's right. That's right. Yeah, even that, even that was amazing. But I mean, obviously not different from the the OG. Yeah. 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 Um, but like, yeah, like I've never, I've never read the original yeah. run of Phoenix Saga, mm-hmm. everything that happens after that, and then Dark Phoenix Saga. Yeah. But I mean, like, I feel like the cartoon does it enough to where we all know the story. You it's all know great. the story, it's and it's good, story. and like, it's it's compelling. Yeah. And I don't know if they go into the excruciating detail that they do in the comic, but like, yeah. for a kids show, you cannot have one of the main characters literally just murder an entire planet full of people. So I would not fault them for maybe omitting that part of it but also like, they I mean, likely they touched on the sex club that the villains belong to and yeah. um but did it in a way that you still understood it if you were an adult and watched yeah and they just called it the inner circle because you can't say hellfire on the children's yeah. show oh yeah <laughs> i feel like the inner circle is a little bit dirt, a little bit dirtier though i feel like yeah. it's a little bit more culty-ish <laughs> a little bit yeah, yeah. inner the inner <laughs> um, I'm entering her inner circle. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I think we did. Was that just a crossover character from Action Boys? <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. Um, Kaylin. Kaylin. <laughs> um, but I mean, other outside of that, I don't know if, if there's like a ton of. If, if I'm being honest, like across the board, the X Men movies are just not great, Mm-mm. and I don't enjoy watching them. Mm-mm. Yeah, I mean, I think at I the time, the last couple actually, just like I remember watching it. the first X Men, like back in the fucking early aughts. What happens back in when a le- when lightning hits a yeah? To- when lightning hits a toad, same thing that happens to in everything, everything else, else, baby. <laughs> God. Thing. Thanks oh. for that, Joss Whedon. <laughs> yeah. Um, was, wait, what? what, what, what? Uh, yeah, he ghost writ that line of dialogue, oh, among other things, no. in that movie. No, that. That, 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 it, it, that scans. Yeah, it does. That, that, <laughs> that tracks. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, but, no, like, even. I remember as a kid, so in 99, I was 11 years old. Uh, so when that movie came out, and all of the, all of the X Men for some reason had a leather fetish <laughs> yeah, they and like they call attention to it like if they, if they hadn't called attention to it yeah it would have been one thing but like they literally call attention to the fact that like they're all wearing black leather and it's like what would you prefer yellow spandex and like little kid me is like fucking yeah <laughs> um <laughs> And then, like, not only, like, maybe... <laughs> Which, thank you, Deadpool, for the callbacks of the yellow spandex. Yeah, it's yeah. really great. Um, like, four years later, I think, like, 2003, I want to say, is probably when, like, Daredevil came out. Shit movie. Uh, yes. <laughs> but uh, they... Uh, no, uh, that, it... Uh, get out of here. Um, but they at least showed the fact that they can do comic book character... Like costumes, oh yeah, albeit again in leather for some reason, but like because e- red le- leather. leather doesn't shrink when it gets fucking wet. No, not at all. It also it's smells also not terrible. constricting at all. It also doesn't breathe, so it stinks to high he- fucking heaven if you waste yeah. all the time. Um, but like they, that was I feel like one of the the first like superhero movie outside of like Batman because like. Batman at that point had become so campy yeah. and was like, okay, we can we need to do everything to avoid actual superheroes in our movies bat nipples yeah and so like daredevil was i feel like the first time where they were just like here's the comic book movie here's the character how they're supposed to look yeah as close as we can get that on on a movie set and it's like okay yeah you you can do the thing yeah and then so why haven't you been doing you don't have to give everything like a gritty reboot yeah and and then like and and then um marvel teams up with paramount 
and launches the fucking MCU with Iron Man, yeah. which isn't him in just a leather suit being like, I'm Iron Man. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's him in an iron suit. It's actually not iron. So that's. Um, watch the fucking movie, Harley. It's not iron. It's not. I mean, I'm iron. Then why it's did like, they call him Iron Man? I don't know because that's what the press wanted to call him. Because um, he was created in the, the 60s when, when, they didn't understand. <laughs> when they didn't know that there was going to be a tougher metal than an iron ever created. Yeah, vibranium. Yeah, oh my God. Josh, um, Josh, 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 Josh. I would totally watch an Iron Man in leather, though. That would be an interesting. <laughs> I would yeah. too. Right. So it's just it's Leather Man. <laughs> it, it's like the, I'm pretty sure there's a serial killer named that. Oh, there's Leather Face. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just in general, like the X Men movies have never quite sat right with me. No, no. except for Last Stand, that was great. Fuck off! Like, <laughs> even at their most enjoyable, like they're they just they constantly make choices that just completely obliterate any sort of like tie to their original form in any it's way. It's almost like they're embarrassed about yeah. what X Men yeah. is yeah. and don't want to do it. The same way, and it's like, which what, is why? really sad about a show why? that's all about like parallels to like, to inclusion, yeah, and, like yeah. Which because like I I remember somewhat of the the nineties cartoon, but yeah. the first X Men that I really truly remember until I rewatched with you, it was X Men Evolution, yeah. Which even though that's not a great show. <laughs> It's not. It's not a great show. It's still better than the movies they yeah. put out. They still, they tied into their original themes. Mm-hmm. They, you know, the characters were fleshed out. Like, it was better than the movies. Yeah. And I feel like there there would be somebody who would make the argument of like, oh, well, when in a show you have time to flesh out all those characters. Mm. In a movie, then tear you've down your had, characters. I'm yeah. sorry, fuck you, because you've had nine movies at this point. Fucking figure out some shit. Flesh out one of the just one also of the characters. Go fucking watch Mystery Men because that movie's yes, fucking dope. It like, is and, I, fucking and I say dope. that like it's obviously like a very kind of irreverent comedy yeah. about superheroes, but I think it's, it's, it's fucking well done. hilarious. Yeah, like I it's, love Mystery Men. Right? Like it's, it has and an age perfectly. And you but... know your characters yeah. in that. Like you could, they are flushed out characters. Yeah. And there's what, seven, eight of them? Yeah, right there's like a that? lot. Yeah. There's a lot of them, yeah. yeah. Including it's... one that they kill off. Yeah. Oh. No spoilers here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 20 year old movie. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, John! I didn't know that! <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, that's just, that that's kind of my, my, I'm just gonna, like, across the board, the X-Men yeah. has just been a not great adaptation. Yeah. So Excellent. on the flip side, then, what's a good adaptation? A good one? Is it adaptation? <laughs> <laughs> that's not my joke. I can't use that. Oh, sorry, John. Uh, <laughs> I stole that from you. God damn it. God damn it. Um, I don't know, like, a good one... Being a person who is, uh, as the college kids would say, is not well read, um, I can't really go into like that too in depth. So I guess I would have to go uh, uh, Hunger Games. The first one specifically um, is actually really, really faithful to the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I liked that movie, honestly. And yeah, that's a good movie. I, I, I think I, I had it. I had the book read to me, but I didn't really like get super into it. But I mean, yeah. I, I enjoyed the premise. Yeah, I heard it got kind of, I don't know, kind of complex and kind of collapsed under its own weight in the last two. It, it was, it was, it was fine. Yeah, they were fine. Like um, the second, as far as like the, the adaptations go, the second one is is pretty okay. It's a, it's. It's got some things that they changed a little bit. Yeah, but it was. It's not anything drastic. No. Yeah, like the the biggest change that they did for the first one, I would say, uh, would be that like towards the end, uh, one of the the creatures that they come into contact it was with was not as scary as it was supposed to. Fucking it was not be. as yeah because yeah. like they're just like the they're eyes. just dogs. As opposed to in the book, like all of the dogs that they see have the eyes of the people that have died. Yes. And they're colored to be. To be those people. And that's what I, that's the one thing that I remember disliking about the movie is that they kind of, I mean, I I think there's like a, there's like a very short scene where like it pans in on the dog's eyes and like she makes eye contact, but it doesn't really give that any back. It does not give you. 
which, connection to the fact that these dogs are actually meant to be these people. Which, I mean, kind of makes sense. They've done something to these people to make them. That's pretty scary for, like, what should be, like, a PG, yes. PG-13. But, I mean, like, that's, uh, as we will, as we will no doubt go into in his dork materials, like, yeah. YA gets into shit like that's, that. They do. That's very true. Um, and I feel like that would have just been something that just really took that movie over that, the top. Is yes, that like, the Hunger Games no, books, yes, they're YA, but they're teenage YA. They're really like, they're, it's like TYA is like what it's called or something like that. It's like, I want to say TA. TYA. <laughs> it's TYA. TYA. is an A. But it, they're meant to be for teenagers, even <laughs> if your characters. So I, I made this point in his in his dork materials um, about his dark materials is that um, she's, she's meant to be a little girl, but these books are not re- meant for to be read to children the yeah. age of the main character. For sure. They are definitely meant for teenagers, for older. So if that's your audience, make your movie for your audience. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like this Hunger Games is not a well. is not a movie, should not be is not a book for 8-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds. It's for It's for the 16-year-olds who read it and are like, "Oh, Katniss is 16. I'm 16. I am 16." Like You know, I can understand and the the whole movie industry the movie industry as a whole does this a lot where they don't give teenagers and and i mean 13 and up teenagers enough credit they definitely they they definitely <laughs> burp at their audiences a lot that that's kind of actually the point though is that they play down how mature and sophisticated that these teenagers can be and you know if there's a darker theme that's in one of these source materials they'll skip it and just assume that their audience isn't old enough to that's understand too them, it's though. too dark for them and it's yeah. like no these are these are the same children that we're talking we're having to have conversations about suicide and depression and bullying with because that is what's going on in their life so why wouldn't we also tell them that hey Here's a character in a book that you love who goes through this really dark thing and comes out the other side better. Why wouldn't we show that to them? And I know that there 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 are things that are making their way that way, you know. 13 Reasons Why is a is a big thing right now and you know there there are shows and movies that are doing that now, but we have Hollywood for so long has shied away from that that that's why these these favorite adaptations these least favorite adaptations are least favorites. It's because keep happening. They keep shying away from stuff. Been like, listen here, teenager, yeah. just pretend like you don't have depression until you're thirty, like the rest of us, <laughs> well, and, it's, and it's, deal it's... with it by having five mistresses. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's. You have five mistresses. I thought what? it was three. Oh, <laughs> oh God, I let it slip. We're Should rounding I? up. I thought there were only three. Well, I feel like Hollywood is it's has always been guilty of treating its audience like idiots and i think that yeah. that has never been more prevalent than when dealing with like teens because yeah. you know teens in the at least i would say the american cultural mindset like they don't have sex they don't do drugs they don't know about any of this stuff but I mean, we all know that's yeah i honestly. hate to break it to you yeah yeah i mean exactly and i mean but that's I, written by 40 year old mommies and daddies who just want to pretend exactly yeah. and and they're well, i think except, except for the movie producers that are <laughs> yeah <laughs> I I, Period. I I see wow. where it's, I see where it's going. I see where it's going. Hey, I'm wow. not Harvey. What? Don't don't Harvey. Look at me. Look at Harvey Weinstein. Allegedly. Yeah. Not allegedly. Uh, I allegedly. Would go allegedly. Not allegedly. 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 We're, we're, we're post allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. For legal reasons, I'm going to say allegedly. Yeah. yeah. There, uh, there. I mean, there's mm-hmm. way too much smoke to not be a fire. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he just likes in his pants. Okay. Because mm. he's uh, lying. What? <laughs> Because he's a liar, liar, pants on fire? Yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> so, Harley, um, do you have a favorite adaptation? So, I have literally forgotten every single book, movie, and or other form of media that I can remember except for one. Because I literally read it in the last week and a half. <laughs> Harry Potter. Lord Harry of the Rings. Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Okay, guys, you're done now. <laughs> so so sorry wow um Thanks. no so this Thanks. is gonna come out of left field classic harley but uh, so for for you nintendo fans which i am obviously um unabashedly uh link's awakening just came out for the switch what, what um great game came out on the game boy 
what a lot of people may not know is that it actually has a fucking manga adaptation. And has anyone here played the game Link's Awakening on the Game Boy Advance? No. I Way back not. in the... No. Does anyone it have... Don't any... look at me for anything Zelda related. I know, oh, really? <gasps> yeah. Oh, you monster. I have not popped that cherry. Oh, what? Ever? Ever. Oh, okay. That's going to change. I played Twilight. He bought, he bought it for me. He has owned it and bought them for me. So uh, there is a manga adaptation of Link's Awakening. I it sounds like I'm the only one who's played it. But oh, I, just, I was gonna say I played oh. uh, Twilight Princess, but I was like six hours in and I was still trying to ca- catch that goddamn fish. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. The fishing. So in I gave up. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, does anyone? I guess does anyone mind if I give like a major spoiler away? <gasps> does, <gasps> I know <gasps> that depending on the timeline, Link dies. That is. Not the spoiler. It's not here about. or there. Okay. No, it's it, it's very much isolated to the game. Just go oh, okay. Ahead. Yep. Okay. Cool. Tell us now. So, spoiler alert for Link's spoiler Awakening. alert for Link's Awakening. It's like a twenty-five year old <laughs> game. If you're haven't played it, it's your own fault. Unless you've only just been born and have the Switch, and then in which case it's a brand new game. Well, then you know what? I think you just don't deserve. Then to you're not that. listening then to this probably podcast. Don't listen don't. to this yeah. podcast. Don't yeah, yeah. come at me with your logic and reason. Yep. But cool. if you are, keep listening and head on over to our Patreon yeah. page, patreoncom Smash slash that that like podcast. Button. Steal your parents' credit Steal card. Steal your parents' credit card. Ring that bell. Give us a five star review on Apple podcast because and that does google a thing. maps yeah look at look us up on google maps i don't know how that shit works <laughs> um okay so spoiler alert for link's awakening yes. so in the game there's this whole thing where link is stranded on an island that island is filled with these colorful colorful characters um including but not limited to like one of the only love interests that the zelda lore has actually ever given link zelda no actually no. um we basically go through um, fighting monsters, saving the island. You're supposed to wake up this magical wind fish, and um, you are told by the monsters that I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. You're told by the monsters that if you do that, the island's going to poof. It's going to disappear, blow up. <laughs> and um, obviously, you're playing a game. You're like, oh, okay, I don't, whatever. I don't give a shit. That's just monsters telling me bullshit. The twist of the game is that you finally get to the final boss. You're under the impression that you're basically saving this island from these monsters and it turns out that it's their island it's all been a dream and i know that's like a total i mean again this came out in like 1993 or something so yeah. at the time like it was a pretty like oh <gasps> like that was a big twist but it's not it's even worse in that like the island will just vanish and cease to exist if link finishes his journey this manga adaptation um, of this game, which really, like, that was all subtext. Like, it didn't really give you that information until the very end, and when it did, it was, like, literally, like, a couple, like, lines of just scrolling, scrolling text. text yeah, on just your like, Game Boy screen, like, it, what the fuck yeah, did I just play? Exactly. And, I mean, it was still a mindfuck back then, but um, in the manga, like, it goes real fucking deep and real dark. Like, like this, this manga is darker than any fucking manga about like a game IP has any business being like link literally goes through like the five stages of grieving. He fucking has like PTSD panic attacks. He literally like grabs this girl that he fell in love with and also fell in love with him and tries to basically like drag her off the Island only to realize that like, no matter how far he like tries to swim out with her, he ends up back on the Island. And this is whole thing where he finally comes to terms with that and, like, has to say goodbye to all these people that he's come to, like, know and love. And then he does. And then he's just, he wakes up on, like, a piece of driftwood. And that's the end of the fucking book. And, again, I read, like, I played the game. And I had known the twist. And when I jumped into this manga, being like, oh, that's funny. It's like a Link IP. Cool. Or it's a Zelda IP. Cool. I want to go read about it. Because I'm a dirty Nintendo nerd. <laughs> I fucking, I sobbed. I sobbed like three times and I'm a grown ass fucking man reading about a child in a green tunic, like fighting monsters with a sword. So, um, yeah, I mean, for me, that that was an adaptation that I had absolutely like no idea. Like I, I, I it's going to stay with me. It has no business being as good as it is. And if you have any interest in the IP, I would strongly suggest reading it. I guess the question is whether or not like. Does it add anything? It's an adaptation, 
but it really just tells the same story. And I think that, yeah, in that it like fleshes out what is a very bare bones narrative into something that actually is pretty powerful. So I don't know. That's awesome. Yeah, like, like I had no, again, like no fucking idea going into this. Like I just thought it was going to be like a light little romp because it's it's the same company that the same company that did this manga adaptation is the same company that did, did a lot of the old school um, Pokemon manga. Oh, like Pokemon Adventure? Yeah, which like was. The, so Pokemon Adventures were like Pokemon get stabbed die. and cut in half. And yeah. Yeah. Like, a lot of dismemberment going on. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. That okay. that same company. So I should have known. Should have known. Again, reading that, but again, um, I, I had only kind of half read that factoid when I went into it. But again, I, I don't know the company. I, I wish I knew what the company name was off the top of my head. But like, they have a hand on. They've had a hand on all of these IPs that Nintendo owns, like back in the '90s, and they just like I I'm I am so over like the dark and gritty retelling. But the way that this company handles these stories, as someone who is, again, a dirty Nintendo nerd, like, I fucking love it. I eat that shit up, so. Uh, there you go. You've been oddly quiet over there. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Cheers. What? I've been talking. I've been cracking jokes left and right. Yeah, Someone but... told us your least favorite and favorite adaptations. And, oh. it can't, and it can't be adaptation with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> No. Um, I'm going to leave this on a cliffhanger, folks. You're not going to hear the answer on this episode because you got to head on, head on over to our Patreon page. Oh! <laughs> Patreon.com slash Moist Boys Podcast. Oh, Sign I will, up. I was going to tell them what my favorite adaptation is real fast, though. Okay. Oh, well, It's oh. just real fast. It's real easy. Yeah, no, please do. Super easy. BBC miniseries Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that checks yeah. out. Yeah. That, yeah. 100%. That checks out. Yep. Yep. Okay. Have you ever heard about my uh, fan fiction of a Jane Austen book no i also really like the sci-fi miniseries of dune it stays pretty pretty that's all about okay we're done yeah so patreon what josh british patreon? aristocracy that also has its own gun range <laughs> so patreon <laughs> patreon.com it's called aim and amiability hey i hate you so much i know i'm, I'm sorry not. folks don't give us money we don't deserve it after that give us money but if you do think we still deserve it head on over to our our patreon page patreon.com slash moist boys podcast we have exclusive content over there right now including what is my maybe perhaps you'll find out what my favorite adaptation is probably not yeah probably probably not not. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but you you will see us watch us play is Is it yeah you will watch us play (laughs) Total Rick All, the card game based on the Rick and Morty episode. What? It's a pretty good. It's a pretty good video, but only available for our Patreon. Goddamn right. I'm subscribers. Watch that. Nice. Um, and don't forget, if you do get onto our Patreon, we get to one hundred dollars per month. Harley will create an Instagram and post photos of something. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And then we'll kick him off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh shucks. Shucks. Oh well. I'll have, my, darns. I'll have my Instagram. <laughs> That's just to keep you company at night. <laughs> Scrolling through, just keep refreshing the likes page. Yep. Somebody will like me. Don't forget to check out uh, <laughs> our Instagram page. We are Moist Boys Podcast on Instagram. We have our link tree up. We have probably, by the time this goes up, 20 links to different things that we have right now. <laughs> yeah. Because we are... We've been busy. We, yeah, we're busy. We're busy. Busy, busy boys. Busy bees. Busy bees. Busy bees, boys. Um, <sighs> don't forget to, if you are on Twitter, please um, share and tag us at Moist Boys Pod. Uh, we, we're going to start running some... Uh, running some... Uh, sweepstakes or uh whatever. sweepstakes yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know what's the word i'm th- trying to think of giveaways yeah for what well sweet sweet content oh, sweet content sweet. and not only that we also have a merchandise sweepstakes page. more like sweet steaks <laughs> yeah, <out of> here. <laughs> That's we're meat. actually not giving away meat no please, please no, no meat on the only meat no all... perishables <laughs> uh we do have stickers though and t-shirts and sweatshirts and all kinds of paraphernalia yeah. on our t public page we have a link to that on our instagram page and i think i also made that the um uh, twitter link you can find there as well if i did not i am going to uh if you get a hold of us uh moist boys podcast at gmail.com you can uh, send us comments, questions. We, uh, If we start getting questions, I think we're going to start reading them on the air because that's the thing people do when we need you to like us. Yes. Yep. <laughs> please uh, engage with us. Please 
Um, I'm not above begging. I'm on my hands and you know, and just my knees. I'm on my knees <laughs> praying not above to this sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, neither am I. <laughs> um, that's that's for a, that's for a thousand dollars. That's Patreon. on the Patreon. Go to Patreon. <laughs> yeah, Carly's getting pegged. <laughs> <laughs> like a game of rummy. Um, rummy. That, what's backgammon. It, what's one of the little pegs? Backgammon. Yeah. Backgammon. Yep, it'll, we're gonna <laughs> upload our Batgammon episode onto the Patreon pretty Fucking soon. Nailed it. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening to whatever bits of this episode I'm actually gonna upload. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how long uh, how long it is. 